Sustainability Advisory Board on Monday, March 7th. Um, I'm guessing that there is no public comment, seeing none. We do have a public comment from Pat regarding one of the items. Ah, yes, that's a good point. Should we do roll call first then? Sure. Okay, let's do that. Okay. We might want to hold that until one of the items though, her public comment. Um, I don't know. I think we should read it during the public comment section. Okay. Do the call to order. Okay. Uh, Eric DeGroote, Pat Hellquest, Lisa Marone, Vic Oliver. Here. Ken Osmond. Here. Bob Peschel. Here. Brad Spambauer. Here. Aaron Wojciechowski. And he did email me saying he was going to be here at about 630. Um, uh, Michelle Mutzel and Margie Davy here so we do have quorum even before Aaron gets here mm -hmm. okay well do you want to read the public comment from Pat then sure so this is directed to the sustainability advisory board members it's pertaining to the native plant ordinance that's on the agenda tonight so she wrote I am writing you I'm writing to you about ag agenda item five, native plant ordinance, the city code of concern, specifically section 17-33 and section 17-44 is about weed cutting and lawn care. Concern, concern about the weed cutting and lawn care code was brought to the sustainability advisory board's attention in December, 2019, when UW Oshkosh students submitted their report, native landscaping. The students pointed out that the current code was unclear, sorry, that the current code has unclear guidelines for landscaping with implications that the city may order lawn landowners to cut any vegetation over eight inches. While native plants are not explicit, explicitly covered by the eight inch rule, the language vegetative growth could be interpreted to mean that native plants are subject to the eight inch rule. The current City of Oshkosh code sends a mixed message to Oshkosh landowners about the native plant landscaping. While section 30-254 of city code includes specific native plants as suitable for landscaping, section 17-44 does not protect native landscaping from a mowing requirement and, and requires approval for native landscaping areas of any size. Landowners who wish to landscape with native, native plants should not have to worry about a city order to mow their landscaping. The SAB edit of the weed cutting and lawn care code addresses the issues raised by the students. The SAB edit of section 17-33E has a clear definition of noxious weeds that refers to the Wisconsin State Code. The SAB edit of section 17-44 makes clear that the eight inch rule applies only to turf grass and noxious weeds. The phrase vegeta vegetative growth is removed. The SAB edit replaces the requirement to obtain approval from the Director of Parks with the requirement to give notice to the city if the native landscaping area exceeds 50% of the total area of the private property. It also states that the landowner is not required to send notice for landscaping areas smaller than 50% of the total area of the property. The SAB edit clearly communicates to the landowner that native landscaping is acceptable as long as turf grass growth is limited to eight inches and noxious weeds are controlled. The staff edit and the SAB edit agree on the definition of noxious weeds in section 17-33E. However, the two edits differ in other significant ways. The staff edit of section 17-44B includes the term other vegetative growth, which is not defined and could be interpreted to include native plants. The staff edit of section 17-44D also includes the requirement that landowners apply to the director of parks for approval of a native landscaping area on their, private, on their property to obtain exemption, exemption from the eight inch rule. This requirement applies to native landscaping areas of any size. No time frame or criteria for approval are described. The staff edit does not clearly communicate that native landscaping is acceptable in the city of Oshkosh. There are many benefits of native plant landscaping, improved water quality, better control of erosion and flooding and increased biodiversity. Chapter four, environmental conservation of the city of Oshkosh sustainability plan has goals related to native landscaping, including a goal to review and modify city lawn 
and tree ordinances to encourage responsible native landscaping. Landowners who wish to landscape with native plants should not have to worry about a city order to mow their landscaping. I wish I could be at the meeting discussing the proposed changes to section 17-33 and section 17-44. My hope is that these sections can be modified to address concerns of both staff and the sustainability advisory board. Sincerely, Pat Dwyer Hawquist. Thank you, Brandon. And thank you, Pat, because I know you're watching. <clears throat> okay, seeing no other public comment, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes as written. So moved. Second, anyone? Second. Thank you, Ken. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. We haven't done this for so long, we don't remember how. <laughs> we used to roll call. We're waiting for that lag. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is environmental justice resolution, discussion, and action. And do I pass that to you, Kelly? Sure. Um, and we also have Mary Palmieri here, too, and um, she's actually the um, council member that brought it forward. So um, please feel free to, to jump in, Mayor Palmieri. Um, the council directed the um, SAB to um, look over the, a resolution that was brought forward at council um, for consideration. So city staff met um, particularly with um, our city attorney and city manager, um, and then some also some other community development staff. Um, we went through the um, resolution uh, just to see you know, what would make sense for um, the city of Oshkosh? You know, what are we doing already as far as environmental justice goes and what we think we can do? So in front of you here, uh, we do have the original resolution that was um, provided to staff. And what we did on the side is we just added comments of some potential changes just so you could kind of understand like where we were thinking, you know, why we were thinking that some changes would be made. So just to kind of go through um, that we didn't really make any major changes and um, we did add a whereas where, um, you know, we would look to incorporate um, environmental justice con concepts into the city strategic plan. Um, obviously considering it with the um, ARPA funding. Um, and then we also did um, look at um, ensuring in future plans that we would, um, you know, have that under for consideration if it's the city's comprehensive plan, um, future strategic plans and other, you know, even sustainability if there's any other, you know, plan updates coming forward. Um, and then the other item was um, that's something that I think is important is um, the EPA has a, um, uh, they have a website that has mapping tools like through GIS and you can put in the city and look at a lot of different data sets and compare the city to um, the state and to the, um, you know, the rest of the country. And actually the state of Wisconsin is working on something too. So we're gonna link that on our website. Um, so we have that information readily available for um you know for the public and for anybody else that would like to see it um just so that information is out there so you're talking uh, about the ej screen correct tool, correct right correct yes yes so i think that's important and, and those organizations update that information um you know as quickly as they can get it i'm sure they have more access to the information so we thought it would be best to to kind of lean on them and, and with the work that they've already done so um those were some of the, you know, the, the major changes that we did make, but overall um, it is, is pretty close to, you know, how it was submitted to us <laughs> in form. Mayor Palmieri, did you have anything else to add that I might have missed? Well, I guess, um, you know, I'd like to just say that, uh, you know, Council did refer it out to, to sustainability, but, it, but this does float across um, diversity, equity, and inclusion as well, as, as this does have a primary focus on equity with the environmental lens and environmental issues with the equity lens. So, um, you know, I, I'm really glad that you guys have a chance to, you know, make some recommendations and uh, appreciate that staff went through and, and looked at some other pieces. Um, <clears throat> certainly, uh, the main takeaway that I got, um, and this was, this was actually started, I, I believe, Wasa passed theirs back in November, October, November. And that was, I think, the first one in the state, an environmental justice resolution. 
And so I was really inspired by that. Um, although there's had a, a, a pretty direct focus on the infrastructure package. And, and I think I, I broadened it out somewhat and, and staff broadened it even further. So, you know, just appreciating <clears throat> any recommendations or, <clears throat> excuse me, thoughts that SAB may have um, before this bumps back to council or potentially if there is a recommendation for DEI to have a look at it as well. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any comments or questions on it? Has anyone had a chance to look at the EJ screen tool on the EPA's website? It's, um, you know, it's a government website, so <laughs> <laughs> keep that in mind. But <clears throat> if, uh, if you, you know, are able to go out and look at that, I don't know, Brandon, are you able to pull it up here? Yeah, I can pull no? it up. I mean, I spent a good amount of time. I created a bunch of maps using all the tools that were available. Um, I mean, I have those all, like, they're created and in a folder in case we wanted to, like, you know, look at something um, that was pertinent to Oshkosh, you know, right now, today. It was kind of the thought. But, yeah, I can pull it up, too. Let's see what you did. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see if I can. Find yeah, and, and, and just to note, you know, some of the data on it, you know, the data sources are from different time periods and everything. So you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. But it kind of gives you a good overview of what's going on in the community and, um, you know, mm -hmm. something that we can continue to, to look at and, and use as guidance when, um, you know, looking at projects and, um, you know, spending and, and, you know, a lot of other city functions. And I thought it might be kind of interesting, too, to see, um, and, and this is just me personally, you know, how it overlays with some of our qualified census tracts or those um, distressed areas as well. Um, you know, this has a little uh, different, you know, it shows some, some water, air, hazardous waste, um, at least a half a dozen different um, data points around. Um, yeah, this one looks like it's lead paint indicator and, you know, percent of housing built before 1960. So you can see, you know, they have the different kind of a heat map showing the, you know, different areas in the community that, you know, might be more susceptible to that lead paint. And this is, this specific map is, you know, in comparison to state percentages. Yeah, you can flip back and forth between state mm -hmm. and nation on the uh, comparisons. And for instance, this one is hazardous waste proximity. Um, the count of transfer storage disposal facilities divided by distance. You know, some of, some of the definitions to some of these things are, would take a little bit more time to maybe dive into and really have a full understanding of what exactly the maps are accomplishing. But at least I at least went through and did, you know, take all the information out that we could for the maps. So we have it on, on hand. But yes, the like Bobby's got it pulled up on his screen now. So you can just basically click through a couple different things and then these different data sets are already established that you can review and help you make choices, I guess. And then I did see that um, the um, Wisconsin DNR, Wisconsin um, Human Service or Health Services, um, WDC, uh, and another group, they are putting together kind of a website somewhat similar to, and I think they're kind of in beta testing now. So hopefully sometime in later 22, there'll be a state site also. Does this help the city integrate into other aspects of community development, such as uh, lead mitigation and water supply i mean i think it, i think it can right we just haven't um this is our really our first time looking at this right it's when it got brought up so we've only you know had the last month or so to really yeah. look at this website and land recovery um in depressed neighborhoods uh dilapidated housing that would be the underlayment of acquisition urban agriculture so we see this kind of integrating into all of that? <clears throat> well, I think you could look at it that way. Um, the other way that you could look at it is, you know, from an equity measure in terms of um, some of the environmental concerns for different <clears throat> demographics, um, you know, across not just uh, race or ethnicities, but but uh, low income areas as well. And are, is that broken down by census tract that we're showing right there? I don't think it is. 
Um, it like, looks like it might be a little bit deeper. I know that there are some, um, yeah, mm. that probably looks a little bit. Well, no, I think it might. I guess I'd have to see if those two are the same, but it might be one one step. What's the header? Deeper. On this, this is the uh, lead paint indicator. Can you scroll down, Brandon? Does it say? It doesn't. Okay. Esri. Oh. Okay. Well, and each one seems to be a little different. So. They are. That's that's why I said you really, and on that website, it does actually have, um, like, definitions with the data sources <laughs> and, like, right. what it actually means. So yeah. I would urge you to really kind of review that before. And the staff is, that's what we're kind of working on right now is right. really to fully understand the data that's being presented. I think it can just help us understand different parts of the city with these different data points that, as has been said hasn't necessarily been available before right but this would likely it could possibly influence uh future development and gentrification issues within the city as well couldn't it i don't I mean, know that it would specifically relate to that but um it can certainly help us to maybe look at how we allocate resources and prioritize capital improvement. Um, as a matter of fact, tomorrow night, council is going to be talking about the capital improvement policy and, um, you know, where we invest and, and sometimes with the redevelopment, as Kelly knows mm -hmm. and others know, that it can be quite a bit more expensive, but maybe this can help inform some of the priorities of where, where things go. And that's, that's where I see it, it's kind of serving as a guide. And we already kind of do that already, like with CDBG and some of our other programming, mm -hmm. or, you know, we know the areas that have, you know, the lead pipes, but this might help us say, okay, this area is impacted by lead pipes, but maybe they're also negatively impacted by some of these other mm -hmm. things. Let's focus on this area. So I think it's a combination of that. And so there, is there a plan to have a process to layer in this data? into the planning process? That's what we're kind of working on right now. Um, we've talked about incorporating it maybe into future plans, like our strategic plan for the city. And I'm guessing there'd be some objectives and some action items that would come out of there potentially um, and in our comprehensive plan. But we've also talked about ways, maybe just even in our staff reports, we just say, you know, environmental impacts, you know, so right, there right. would be ways that we would, you know, make sure that it's, you know, we're you know, considering, you know, what the impacts would be as we move forward with projects or improvements or public infrastructure. Uh, how about individual site plan approvals? Would there be a process to include this type of information or require it uh, when evaluating approvals for site locations for development? Oh, so like in the plan commission staff reports? And that's what yeah. I was kind of just talking yeah. about. Yeah, that would be part of it. We would take a look at that and work, you know, with the applicant just to identify any of, any of those and if there's anything we can do to potentially mitigate those as well. Um, I guess my comment on this is that this is, it's, what's interesting to me is that I've, I've lived in a larger community before, much larger than Oshkosh. And, um, just interacting with leaders in that community. And that was, at this point, this was 20 years ago. Um, this was the type of stuff that larger communities have been working on and trying to utilize uh, in, in some of the things you're talking about. Um, so to me, it's really exciting that this component of environmental justice and knowing what the surroundings are, where it's, you know, where these issues are that that kind of exist in our community and tells us where we can improve them and how we can improve them by developing um, areas around them to be suitable um, areas for people to live, um, suitable areas for people to, to live and play and, and do all that good stuff. So um, that's just one component of environmental justice that we're talking about is making sure that the areas where we live are safe environmentally uh, for all people. So. Um, you know, the, the next aspect and tool that we utilize, and this is kind of what you're talking about, Kelly, is, is utilizing that information to actually improve the environment around, not just the development or uh, the neighborhoods, but actually improve the environment. Um, and, and, you know, I think, I think it's great that Oshkosh is making that connection that um, the uh, people depend on the environment and that the environment needs to be um, at the forefront of, 
a part of our decision making process um, because um, everyone is affected by it if we if we ignore it um, but we also know that uh, those most diverse communities are the most affected about it because uh, they don't have the abilities to move out of it. Um, and so and I think this is a great tool. Um, and I think any time a body of government can start making these connections about environmental justice and how it relates to uh, the people of our community is really important. I agree. Any other thoughts or comments? Um, I would just, I'd be curious, yeah, as, as uh, we dive into this a little bit to see um, where some of these metrics overlap. And I think that's kind of similar to what some mm -hmm. of the comments that have been made here. But I'd be, yeah, perhaps kind of prioritizing areas of the city based on some of these criteria that, you know, we're seeing some significant overlap. I mean, and again, just looking at this EJ screen, which I'm, fascinated by um <laughs> pretty cool and yeah i'll just warn you don't turn on too many of the data points because <laughs> right. mm -hmm. then you won't see anything yep. yeah um, it, it it tends to be very more one, narrow yeah one but yeah perhaps a, a a more refined tool or a you know some kind of additional um digging into this might kind of show us areas that are seeing um right some of these air toxic cancer risk respiratory health particulate matter and low income and okay. access to, right? Like I think we're gonna see sort of a, a compounding effect, um, which tells us something. I'm just smiling because it's clear that we have a lot of environmental and social justice geeks around this table who are <laughs> fascinated by this. <laughs> um, what we're actually being asked to do tonight is support um, incorporation of, of this concept into the city plans and we've sort of had discussion on it already, but would anybody like to make a motion that we include this as written, or do we want to hold it for another month and look at changes? Um, do we want to suggest it go to additional boards? Has, has DEI seen this? Okay. I mean, Aaron, I, I had provided it to Aaron. Who sits on both committees. In anticipation of it eventually working its way through. Um, probably back in December or January. Uh, so he saw the draft and then I don't know if he's had an opportunity to review the materials for tonight. I haven't had a chance to ask him. I just saw those this week myself. <laughs> so my, I guess my feeling is I'd, I'd like our committee to have more time to kind of chew this over and I'd also like DEI to have more time to chew it over and then once um, you know, us to come back in a month and look at it, and then also to consider DEI's comments as well. I think that would be my recommendation as well. Yep. Okay. Was there any timeline we're trying to hit? Directed to Kelly and... No, I don't Andy believe so. Right? I think it was just sent back for, you know, for well, committee consideration, unless you had a certain time. I, I do have a question, I guess, that just kind of, as you ask that, I saw for tomorrow night's council meeting the cdbg action plan is removed right when is that due in finality is there whenever potential? we get the allocation we didn't get our allocation yet so we're so, waiting on that so is there i mean i i personally could see that there may be a possibility that there may be some Aaron. census tracts in the cdbg i mean priority have, areas that may potentially be something but I mean, I we have that inf yeah, we have that information already that we could provide if you wanted more information for the next meeting. But with the action plan, we're just waiting for the federal government. So, but I, I mean, from the environmental screening tool, whether mm -hmm. or not that would yeah. help inform anything or reshape that in any way, if it's not quite ready for final. Um, I mean, the plan is pretty much ready. We're just waiting for the allocation for the number to put in, but. Um, most of our CDBG activities take place in low income census tracts anyways. So we could take a look and see if there's anything else, but we have programs for lead paint removal and, you know, improving the homes and getting rid of lead pipes and, and, you know, those sort of things. So, um, whether this has been passed or not, does it have any influence on whether you can use this tool though? Does it? 
now that you know it's there? Um, you know, we'll definitely use it as we move forward with all of our plans, like I mentioned. Um, but like I said, there's, you know, we have, we've been kind of doing it already. We've been, you know, with some of our programming, especially for CDBG. And that's what I wanted okay. to put into the resolution is recognizing that there are pieces and parts of environmental justice that the city has, has been working mm -hmm. on. But this was just kind of, I think, more emphasizing using a tool either like this or this one or when the DNR may come out to give some more specifics into additional things that those, those challenged areas may be experiencing that we hadn't visualized or seen before. Bob? Sure, and, I, and again, I, I guess I'd be back to, to holding off until both committees can look at it, but I'd also I would implore you to, to utilize that tool as an example of how it could work mm -hmm. in that example. Not to say that you're going to utilize right. it, but it shows both committees this tool that, that right. we're suggesting to utilize um, in action. Yep, run through the demonstration of yep. how it would work and how we would incorporate that. Yep. Here. Okay, well, without calling for a vote on it, it seems to me we were all sort of in a had general consensus that we'd like to have this back next month with a little bit more detail and we'd also like to have the DEI committee look at it am I correct in thinking that yeah yep. Yep. Okay. I will get in touch with the DEI uh, staff liaison then and pass them the, the pass the information along to them is there any more specific information that you would like staff to provide or is it just um, you know the board itself wants to go through it and bring back your thoughts I just want to make sure we're prepared for next month I totally understand and I appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody have any comments on that? Uh, no, I was just going to say, I think, yeah, having a more thorough look through it. Um, I, I, I guess I would in some ways uh, not necessarily defer to DEI, but I'd be curious to hear their sure. thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it, just, does this committee also get copies of those example are. maps that you pulled, Sorry. Brandon, oh. with the packet? Um, I mean, the, so now that you guys have accessed the website, um, those are just creations of that data. So there's a, there's a there's a button on there to create maps, you know, and so it's just. But if you want those copies, they're all in PDFs. I can save you some time if you want copies of them. Perhaps well, you could send those out yeah, just okay. so that people. Sure. We also have only half of our committee here tonight. Um, yeah. We're pretty lean tonight as far as our our um, board goes. So including that will maybe help with the explanation for them too and i only did the um the ones that i have here in this folder are all of the uh environmental indicators i did okay. not do the um the social much social justice, justice social stuff okay. yeah. So. yeah and of course we care about both but yeah yeah just just, just out of curiosity when you were looking at it brandon because i didn't take this super deep dive mm -hmm. um but i played around with it for a while or maybe Kelly, you you know the answer to this. Do do you know if any of the social indicators correlate to the SVI, the Social Vulnerability Index? I don't. Sorry. And okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time with the social yeah. ones. I did yeah. the environmental okay. ones. So. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't either. But we can certainly look at the data sources for both of those and see if they match up. That might be. I was just yeah. All I had to do is drop a pin, and mm -hmm. it just automatically tells me right. stuff. Okay, now I have to ask you all to put away your toys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brandon, you're going to email that link out to everybody on SAB then, just so everybody has it maybe? I'll, yeah, I'll, send, out the, to the I'll send the link, and I'll send um, – it it'll probably have to be a uh, – There'll be a link for a file, and then it'll because we can't send large files. And I think if I put all those PDFs in one email, it won't work. Mm -hmm. So, but you'll have access to that for like 30 days or something like that. You'll have to download them yourself if you want the maps I created between now and the next meeting. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Okay. I'm well, yeah. probably not going to stay for the rest of your meeting, but I just want to be here for any questions and we know you're always with us in work. spirit so <laughs> we appreciate that yeah I'll be listening to the native plant piece because I'm really intrigued I know Nina had oh sorry you're, that's <laughs> I'll watch <laughs> thank you for coming Lori okay so no action on that item then right we're just um, well the only action is that DEI. we're putting on putting it on next month right. and asking that they include DEI with okay. it Ooh. We're not passing it off to them, we're sharing it. Sure. There you go. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, in regard to the na native plant ordinance, which Pat and Michelle have been our primary um, people working on this, because neither of them was able to be available tonight, they have made a request that we table this for a month. This is something that we can do if you choose to. I would need a motion to table the table the agenda item until next month and it would need a second and then we have to vote on it. So if anybody is interested in tabling that, you could make a motion. So it's items. Item number five, the native plant ordinance, the discussion and action. And this is what Pat was speaking to with her comment. Right. And it's the change in the ordinance. Okay. I'll make a motion to table item number five from this meeting, the native plant ordinance to be brought back at the April meeting of 2022, Sustainability Advisory Board. Thank Sorry. you, Bob. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor of tabling this? Aye. 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 Okay. We will bring that back next month. And they just better make it, huh? <laughs> Okay, that takes us to the Oshkosh Energy Analysis discussion, and I'm going to turn that over to me, I think. Okay, I'm turning that <laughs> over All right. to Brad. Go ahead. So you want to go um, to the next slide? So I'll just uh, preface this by saying this is just sort of a first pass um, kind of back of the envelope of some quick math. I got these numbers from Brandon. Um, but then also did some digging back into the report um, that the gentleman from MIT had given, had presented to um, SAB about a year or so ago. Yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> and then just doing some, some digging on some numbers. So um, roughly, you know, almost 280 million kilowatt hours of electricity are consumed in the residential sector. This is based on 2019 data that Brandon shared with me. Um, the number uh, that that Brandon provided me was about one or you know, total number of one or two um, family dwelling units is about you know 18,400, 500. Um, in general, the average American home uses about 10,000 kilowatt hours of energy per year. Uh, that number in Wisconsin is a little bit lower, so it's closer to about. Uh, eight, between 8,300 and 8,600 kilowatt hours per year. Um, we were actually lower than a lot of other states, which I found interesting. Um, but just, again, quick math. Uh, if you just take that total electricity consumed by residents, by the actual number of residences, we, you get about 15,000. Um, now, again, this is just on average, right? So we have to remember that 15,000, um, you know, is probably more likely for a home that is maybe a little bit larger, more people living in it, whereas a single person living, you know, maybe uh, in a duplex, right, might be a little bit smaller. So we're just kind of taking an average there. So um, that just kind of gives you that idea of that number. If you want to go to the next one, um, if we move into uh, electricity use in commercial and residential, um, interesting to note about 700 million kilowatt hours of, um, electricity consumed, that's about two and a half times more in commercial and industrial versus residential. Um, so, you know, just uh, things to think about, uh, and we, I would be happy to bring this topic back to SAB, is how many individual um, commercial and industrial customers does this represent? So similar to on the previous slide, um, taking that total of kilowatt hours and kind of distributing, distributing it among residences how many total commercial or industrial customers are represented in, you know, with these, um, you, this use of electricity. Um, just as a kind of data point, take it as you will, uh, the university uses approximately 30 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year. Um, and that's been pretty much the same since 2002. Um, we're down a little bit like 27, 28 million, but um, it's been fairly steady. I like to call that our basal metabolic rate, yes. The question, so I make sure I'm understanding these numbers. This is sort. This is consumption, but does this get? Does this alter at all based on source? Uh, what do you mean? Or is this all transmission line? Uh, these are just, I, I mean, believe, yes. data from Wisconsin Public Service. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, so just total uh, within kind of the city. Parameter. And the other thing to think about too with these numbers is the potentially, and I don't know if this is true, but like the way that uh, that say the planning and zoning department or the city in general, the assessor's department views a residential property versus a commercial property. I think it's everything that's three dwelling units or more is a commercial property. WPS may not have that same mm -hmm. logic. They sure. might say an apartment complex is residential. All individually. Right. Yeah. Units. So, you know, I don't, you know, what I came don't to think. mind was is the four imprint solar panel array that they're going to put mm -hmm. in. How does that affect the big end or the small end, you know, mm -hmm. kind of? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, definitely important to think about, and I'll kind of get to that. Uh, okay. in, a, in a later slide. But yes, I mean, very <laughs> important to think about. So, um, you know, I would also ask what incentives or programs are available to reduce electricity consumption for these customers, um, right? If we've got two and a half times more electricity being consumed in the commercial uh, and industrial sector, and again, kind of defining what that means, um, it's a lot more energy. Uh, and granted, you know, we may be talking about things like big box stores, right, which may just mm -hmm. use a lot more electricity. But let's think about how do we um, get them to use less and or from where are they getting their energy from, I think is, you know, kind of maybe what Ken is saying. Um, so I also looked at natural gas usage. And this was just, again, some kind of rough numbers that we got from Wisconsin Public Service on natural gas therms. So about 28 million uh, in the residential sector. So again, take that, you know, 18,500 or so um, and divide that out. That's about uh, 1,535 therms per unit per year. Um, so each home is using about that amount. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, I realized I didn't change the KW on that last one. Um, so again, in commercial and residential, we're using about, they're using about 51 million therms of natural gas. Um, that's about 1.8, almost two times more versus residential. Um, and so again, I would ask, you know, how many customers is that? Uh, and then again, just as a reference, the university uses approximately 2.7 uh, million therms of natural gas annually. Um, and so I would also ask about, you know, sort of uh, what incentives or programs are, are there available to reduce natural gas consumption um, and specifically electrify uh, heat sources and get us off of natural gas? Um, I think that's sort of the logical step if you're thinking about this in terms <coughs> of emissions. Um, so again, these are just some quick calculations. Um, but if you want to go to the next slide, what I would point us to, um, I'm generally not a fan of things that get done and sit on a shelf somewhere. So. Uh, I'd like to see us use that report produced by Zachary uh, Brazola from MIT um, that he presented to us last June. Um, and the, one of the key takeaways, I went back and watched his presentation again and found this graph particularly interesting in that, um, you know, we had a, a 2007 city carbon inventory as well as uh, you know numbers of actual 2019 emissions my guess is those data were based on similarly to the to the ones Brandon was able to get from Wisconsin Public Service um, and his model uh, produced emissions for the baseline measurement that was within one percent of actual um, emissions so the model that they use is pretty good um, and I think what's most important to note here in that baseline measurement is that orange um, box that says 288 is telling us that 288,000 tons of CO2 emissions are coming from home, single family homes built before 1980. Whereas 37,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions are, com are coming from post-1980 single-family homes. So the newer the home, right, matters. Um, that very, very small gray box on the top is um, new, and I think that's post-1990. I can't quite remember what his definition was, but um, I could go back and look. Um, right, this tells us we need to be targeting older homes for... Um, addressing energy issues, uh, whether that's windows, insulation, 
um, weatherization, weatherization, uh, you know, and then just like on top of general energy consumption. That's likely independent of heating plant and things like that, because those would be much newer or at least this side of the 1980 mark more than likely. Yeah. That they're they're really the majority of, I think what, what the, the, like in talking with inspections and stuff, you know, they get, they get into these homes when they go to do their, uh, their final inspections or during projects, right? And a lot of the homes, I think this is normal for every city that's as old as this one. Uh, these homes that were built pre-1980, uh, they just don't have insulation in the walls, right? So it's one of those things, like people people think they want to, I think, and Zachary kind of touched on this too, um, they think uh, like getting new windows is going to be their biggest energy saver right because they can feel the wind coming in through their window where in reality it's you know they should really be spending that money on insulation but sometimes in order to do that you gotta you know pull the knob and tube out of the walls and get your whole house redone so i mean sometimes it can become more expensive i've lived in a turn of the century home near campus there's no insulation yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) um And then the, the, the other thing that I think is very important to note is that last sort of emissions by source, um, which points out that kind of reddish orange section, which is natural gas. Uh, so again, the majority of the emissions are coming from natural gas, right? Because we live in a colder climate, you're going to spend a lot more uh, time heating your home and there's greater emissions associated with that. So um, if you just go to the last slide, um, Basically, I would say I would recommend that we revisit this uh, report that he issued um, and perhaps have that um, look, looked at by city staff or see if there are things that could be incorporated. Um, I don't know if that means developing programs to target pre-1980 homes um, and sort of develop some criteria to say, here are the less expensive things to do. Here are the e- you know relatively easier things to do, right? And perhaps prior, we're not necessarily suggesting uh, right away that everyone you know throws a dozen solar panels up on their house. Um, I think what we're saying is add insulation. Look at sort of the envelope right of your house. Um, look at these other things that might be um, a little bit easier to swallow from a financial perspective. Um, So I would encourage us to also look at existing programs um, to fund, you know, if there are, if the city offers programs um, that can help homeowners fund different types of renovations, upgrades, updates, whatever you want to call them. um, Does that apply to this kind of weatherization and uh, just improving the general, you know, um, efficiency of your of your of your home um you know i have other things on here looking at incentives for electrifying your heating source um adding solar making homes solar ready that sort of thing so um i think there's a lot of knowledge to be found in that in that mit report and i would strongly encourage us to use it so we do have i just want to touch on this though so just when we're talking about existing programs to incentivize adding solar or making homes solar ready there is the owner occupied and renter occupied home rehab loan it's a zero percent loan and it you can do energy upgrades with that loan so i think oshkosh is unique in that sense but i i also think that a lot of people in the in the general public aren't aware of these programs right so marketing them you know like we try to do that we do the lunch and learn every year um and there's there's probably more ways for us to be able to get that information out to the public but we and i guess my question would be how often does that program get utilized for other um it has yet to be used for solar okay right so so that's the kind of right marketing to say um hey did you know that this program exists and this program can be used for not just like home reno type things but right these other kinds of yeah a lot of the times the people that are applying for these loans and the type of projects that they have um unfortunately it's that they are in need of other things first and there is a cap as how much money each mm-hmm. of these loans which we are considering and looking at potentially increasing these amounts um however uh, i've been told that there's 
a finite amount of money because um, of the source that it comes from. So it, as it gets used up, they are get, the loans do get paid back, right, quarterly for, for 15 years. Um, so hopefully we can continue to generate that money and continue to do these programs. But ultimately, the large portion of it, you know, if, if, if a ton of people applied for it in one year, it could all be gone. So there's kind of this prioritization of what it should be used for and what it shouldn't be. And right now it's pretty much available to to do a whole lot of, you know, rehab stuff. You know, to, you could do weatherization or a new concrete driveway or a garage or insulation or solar. I mean, there's a, the, the gamut is pretty wide open mm. to do home upgrades and, and renovations and, and rehab projects. Refresh my memory is that the focus is owner-occupied, right? Well, I mean, there's there's the owner occupied, and then there's also a renter occupied, which would be for a landlord to, to apply for. And the cap's different for the landlord. No, they're the same. It's thirty thousand dollars per unit. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's per unit or if it's per home. If it was a duplex, um, I'm not sure. I think it's per home, but we are looking at expanding that with some okay. of the recommendations from our housing studies. So, stay okay. tuned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those are the two big ones, though, right? There's other programs as well, like curb appeal and stuff. But the, what we're talking about today, those would be the two programs that the city does currently have available to the public um, to do energy upgrades. But it seems like a really good kind of small first step might be to just say, hey, did you know this program exists? It could be used for the following things, right? And that might yeah. help the city, right, in a way, uh, on an individual residential basis, start to chip away at some of these um, goals and getting people to move towards, right. you know, just thinking about energy efficiency. So can each department marketed market those differently, like those those programs? Like, or not, not department, let's say board. Let's say we ask you to do just like Facebook. a Facebook post, mm -hmm. and instead of marketing the rehab portions of it, is we ask, for yeah, we ask you to, to market solar panels or, you know, whatever else that might be that, that would be, you know, beneficial for sustainability. Because mm -hmm. okay. the following eligible activities, right, Correct. the following activities are eligible underneath that program. It doesn't mean that we don't care about the other ones. It's just that in this committee, that's what we wanted to be focused on. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I don't see why not. If you recall, um, when Citizen Action of Wisconsin was here, when Kevin Kane spoke to us a couple of years ago, um, they had the program where they were working hard to get people to weatherize, and the reason was because they had determined that that was the largest contributor nationally, well, maybe globally, I don't remember, to, to our problem. Um, of course, it all depends on who you ask. If it's the transportation industry, they say, you know, they're the biggest problem. And the, <laughs> some people think it's cows, you know, but, and it might be. I don't know because I read all these things and everybody says they're the biggest, the other guy's the biggest problem is what they say, yeah. Um, but there's a whole other program there I know that, that would be available to Oshkosh residents. It's just not an Oshkosh program. So there, maybe we need to make sure that our website is up to date too to be sure that we have all the current programs on there. Beyond the city ones? You're, you're Even beyond the city, yeah, because we do have the, on the sustainability page, we have the mm -hmm. resources. Yep. Um, yeah, we need to find a nice student to upgrade that for us. <laughs> okay. So resources page, we need to double check those links and see if, and then if you're, if you're aware of any other programming that's out there that needs to be on that page, I mean, you just let me know and I can let IT know. And then we need to find ways to send people to that page so that they actually see it. You can put anything you want on the internet, but if people don't go look, it doesn't do you any good. And that, that is one of the gaps so that this, these particular programs also help with. Like we, you know, we've had those presentations from AdvoCap about the weatherization program, right? But only certain select part of the public is, is available to Qualifies those programs, right? Yeah. And then there's also qualifications to these programs too, but <clears> it's, it's gonna be different than those qualifications. Right. Um, so I think, I think the programs are, are good. I think they're unique in the sense that um, they're available to a whole kind of other demographic. Um, and they, you know, they can, we've had a lot of good uh, success and a lot of, uh, you know, people are really appreciative once they find out a program and then they get approved and they get their projects done, so. I mean, even just putting like what we talked about, those programs that exist, that, that could be used. Yeah. Um, just putting that on our website too 
and right, just there could be a link on that link, page to, yep. to where they are on the on the city website yeah so, mm -hmm. and that would go a long ways as well because then that that's providing the opportunity to think differently on how to use them and i think sometimes the messaging is really important right like are you interested in what you know doing one of these things to your home did you know right use this program or um you know kind of asking a question um i don't know right just different ways to i think kind of get people sort of a like did you know that and zach kind exists? of touched on that too in his report right yeah There's these envelope of of how you would uh, portray this information to the public right and what kind of get their mind going on what they need mm -hmm. and something else maybe like focus on energy or some of the um, energy companies you know sometimes have grants or could use it as a match so you can maybe leverage yeah. both funding sources to try to get more bang you know all your buck and i think the point that you made brandon is well made in that um advocap has programming focus on energy mm -hmm. has programming right there are things that are sort of um available to everyone there are things that are you know you sort of have to qualify yeah. for um maybe that's another way right like do you own your own home and do you make right whatever whatever those whatever boxes you need to check to get into this program and are you interested in weatherizing adding insulation adding the following things um right check out this program you could get thirty thousand dollar dollars right zero percent right <laughs> um might be just a good way to to package that and then maybe eventually we get to a point where you see which demographics you're serving and you also see which demographics you're not serving right like who is not having yeah like um, kelly you would be able to touch on this i mean like the, the cdbg funding mm -hmm. you would not be able to do a solar program project with that program right i mean that would probably not yeah, no so. yeah but could you do installation um, if, yeah, if it's identified in your lower income and, you know, meet the requirements. Right. So, the, so it cover, it would cover some, some things that would need to be done to a home to help with energy, you know, become yeah. more energy city efficient. staff, I mean, we, that's what we kind of do with our existing programs. We figure out what their needs are, you know, yeah. where they are as far as income levels, and we kind of guide them in different directions to figure out what would fit best for them. Does the city have a marketing department or are we on our own in this? <laughs> uh, we do not. Uh, we have some staff that, you know, um, that's part of their job. So um, it's something that we can talk about as we're looking at our housing that we have. Um, there was a housing study that was just done, and a big part of that was preserving our existing housing. So I think this is part of it, too. Um, if to preserve it, we want to make sure that it's properly insulated and maybe it's energy you know efficient so i think that brandon that could be something that we could talk about and ways that we can encourage that in some of our recommendations moving forward sounds like we got a plan <laughs> i'll start with some facebook posting about the, the programs that are currently available and i'd like you all to think about who wants to star in a psa that we'll have oshkosh media do <laughs> they love doing that kind of stuff because they have so much free time. <laughs> okay, anything else on this? Okay, moving on then. Um, the salting ordinance we have for discussion tonight. Um, where did I put the salting ordinance? I know I had it. There should have been two. Oh, I think there was here. two documents. One of them, one of them is the ordinance, and then the other one is uh, I think it's just like a flyer that the streets department maybe put together. Snow um, I just yeah, found the it on the city website, requirements. So. Yeah. And if you'll recall from the minutes from last month, when um, what's her name? I forgot already. Amanda. Allison. Allison. Yeah. yeah. When Allison from Saltwise was here and. And she pointed out that we have an ordinance that says that people have to sprinkle. It doesn't really say what you have to sprinkle, but you have to sprinkle to get rid of the ice. Um, that, keep it that way. Yeah, and, and that might be a problem depending on what you're sprinkling because salt isn't any good and none of the de-icers are any good for the environment. And sand is going to still end up in the lake. And so what is a person to do? Which is what brought us to this point. Does anybody have any really good ideas on what a person should be doing? Because I read through all this again, and I just went, don't sprinkle. Well, I 
think she had she maybe had some recommendations and it would might take me a minute to find those but yeah so um on this item what is this seven here notice of city of oshkosh snow shoveling requirements that second mm -hmm. paragraph says, when ice cannot be removed, the sidewalk and handicap ramps slash crosswalk accesses shall be kept sprinkled with materials, in parentheses, to accelerate melting and prevent slipping. The ice must be removed as soon as possible. Um, so that specific paragraph, though, I could not find in the physical oh, ordinance. Yeah. You couldn't? So I I couldn't. Where is the physical ordinance? Is that item? It should be the title of the same. This was the second to last one. Find it, Brad? No. It should oh, be wait. item, item six code 25 through 68 and 25 through 69. Yeah, and it is in the very first paragraph, actually, of under sidewalks. See here where it says those exact that exact verbiage is there. When ice cannot be removed, it says to sprinkle. Oh, it does say sprinkle. Okay. My mm -hmm. bad. And then it's also. And we use done. reindeer dust. The sprinkling comes up later as well, um, under. Deposit on streets and near fire hydrants prohibited under D. It says remove such snow and ice or to sprinkle a sidewalk as required. Hmm. I found it twice. So similar to how Pat and Michelle kind of looked at that native plant ordinance, um, you know, this this would kind of be the same process. You don't know, take a good look at this and figure out what kind of verbiage you want. You could bring it back to staff. We could have a conversation order. I think, or maybe. It, could staff look at it first too? I don't know, if, or does it have to be a recommendation from from SAB first? Do you know, Kelly? I mean, I guess we would take you know feedback from. I mean, I, we would want to figure out what SAB wants us to look at. Okay. So I mean, not saying you have to have specific language, but like, what do you want us to look at? Okay. Sprinkling, clearly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the removal of sprinkling. Yes. The problem was we had James Robbie here um, on the. It was Zoom last time, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Um, and he didn't have any other recommendations for us either no. on what could be done to remove ice without sprinkling. <laughs> well, I, th I mean, pitchforks? I don't know. I think what might be good, um, perhaps here in the municipal code as well as in the item that gets, that gets mailed to individual residences, I mean, yes, the, the city... Um, right sort of streets department they have done a lot right and i think that's not the necessarily the area that we're targeting targeting the area that we are targeting are individual residents who are mm -hmm. probably liberally applying um de-icing agents uh you know that perhaps too much so um i think it might be good to just simply and very straightforward uh include um some of sort of the reasons why um an educational process yeah i mean you know something about uh the salt only works up until it's what uh 15 degrees, 15 degrees. so mm -hmm. below that um you know it's less effective um and i think i think there's going to be places where things can be worked into the code and into the into the sort of the notice um and places where additional you know, we don't want to inundate people with sort of an educational campaign there per se, um, but provide reasons why elsewhere. Well, and also give us a ratio of salt to like mm -hmm. land space. Wasn't like per sidewalk squares, there was like a ratio she had. I could have sworn. Like, if we could include yeah. that in here, like per recommendation of this ratio, like that would help as well. Well, a, I know a just a, of sprinkling. a simple one like is like three inches between crystals. Okay. So like crystals should be really spread out yes. versus like, you know, when you see piles the of clumps. salt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're um, supposed to sprinkle, not clump. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think just giving some of that. So I guess my question is, how would you like those comment suggestions edits to something like this? Like, send them, send to, them you, to you. Well, you work them in, in like each of us, or <laughs> workshop I mean, if you that all as a group. Want to to do that, that would be fine. Um, it might be kind of. 
and then crazy to look at, but yeah. it, or or like if one of you or two of you want to to take it on, then maybe yeah. you can work together and send so some drafts that back up. And forth. <laughs> I feel like, I, I mean, I brought Allison, so I feel like yeah. in some ways I feel somewhat <laughs> responsible. Um, I'm willing to take a, a first pass at it. I mean, it could be relatively simple, like you said, right? We're just talking about removing a word or two and then, yeah, and not, then adding language some other based, language. Yeah, yeah it's it might not really be simple. simple. I mean, I think she applied all of the, the research. It's not like we really need to go digging around for anything. It's just how do we want it phrased? Yeah. Well, and that's I mean, our and goal is to change this so that it... Right. Right. Um, so just a suggestion, how about I I can reach out to her, work with her, and maybe ask for her thoughts on sure. edits, and I can put some of those together and send them to Brandon. We can talk about them next time. I mean, also, she has that. I like that idea, but she may have a, another city that um, has, has a, a really good ordinance written. And we could just redo. Just check it out. Okay. See what we got. So that'd be good. Cool. I'm just struggling. I'm trying to remember in a community I lived in, they actually did have a rule of thumb section oh, really? in their ordinance where they said rec recommendations to reduce environmental impact. And I think it was standard city block, st standard sidewalk square, or whatever. It was like, is it a quarter cup or a half a cup of salt? Yeah, or I thought you it? said something about like a coffee cup was like excessive yeah. or something you right. know there's like a but, ratio and it's just not but so ken that mind. what you just said though right that also kind of would play into the environmental justice thing like if we did right. in our in our city code right. somewhere there's a lot of different chapters right but maybe wherever it makes sense to have a rule of thumb section that talks about best practices for certain right. things that'd be cool and i think that that would hit a mark on the environmental justice scale as well agreed definitely Okay, looks like we have no other thoughts on that, but we do have a plan, and our plan is Brad. All right. <laughs> All roads lead to Brad. <laughs> okay, then, that moves us on to our agenda items for a future meeting, which we already have determined will include the native plant ordinance, um, discussion and action. It will include the salting ordinance, ideas maybe next month yes actually and <laughs> what, are, what else should i put on there weren't we going to bring up the environmental justice resolution again well of course we'll have that all right didn't want to miss it pretty much we're just going to repeat tonight A we're going to do it, environmental yeah. justice we're going to do native plants we're going to do the salting ordinance um can we do a follow-up on the energy not necessarily energy analysis but perhaps the um how we can the re yeah, report. yeah the report Share MIT that. report I feel like warrants some um, do you want his full thesis to just be an item to discuss it or not the whole thing um <laughs> just saying, I mean it's a full it was full really intimidating book. the more yeah. you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can it is a doctoral th dissertation there's a lot yeah. of brain didn't he write yeah. a summary you did. Um, I might. I mean, I have to look sure. back. At my I'm notes. sure Brad could write a summary. Oh God. Yeah. I. <laughs> Brad, I'm I guess kidding. I, I would. I would. I would. Uh, yeah, I would encourage folks to perhaps read it over in advance of the next meeting. The MIT study. Yeah, or at least have, take some have, key have, takeaways. I know you've seen it because I'm pretty sure I sent you the the physical video that he yes like presented to his. Uh, professors with and stuff but has yes. have any of you others seen that video or want to see it i'd rather watch it than read it yeah and i mean the the it's <laughs> it's really great because he gets asked some really hard questions and and he does a really great job answering them so yeah, that would if you guys great. are interested in viewing that i can sure. i can send you that as well yeah is, right. is i think it, that would be good and he explains some of those yeah. crafts very in in good detail and you can pause it and take a break and come back to it if you want to so because it's it pretty sounds high, to me like level. we're all going to have a lot of homework for our next meeting. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's possible that we get it earlier than usual. Not yeah. necessarily the agenda, but right. all the material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. So um, we can kind of plan our month. Yeah. Well, like, for instance, native plants is, is kind of is done already. We've right? got so that. That can, sure. that can yeah. just be put in. Environmental justice, we all have it, so we can right. read it. And then the salting ordinance we'll have to work on. So it's um, really just watching the video. 
But yeah. the, that'll just be like a, a separate email that I send you guys as oh, the one off. It'll just yeah. be a, a link, same thing. This is a big file, so it'll have to be a link, a special link that you guys will have to take. And you have to download it on your own computers then. Sure. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Wow. We can binge watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like an hour. <laughs> That's nothing. Piece of cake. Okay, will that be enough for the next meeting, or did anybody have other future agenda items? <laughs> okay, well, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn until Monday, April 4th. So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 We're done. Thank you. It's a marketing thing.